talk about some of the, the principles of the Islamic jurisprudence and uh, what was the main uh, purpose from the fiqh session and what was the main purpose from the legislation of the sharia ah itself. And we mentioned that we have five necessities in Islam. And those five necessities are, you know, the main reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given us some of the rules, sets of the rules in the Quran or whether it was in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But because those five necessities are most fundamental and essential pillars when it comes to the preservation in Islam. Islam came to preserve and to protect five things. And we mentioned two of them. And today we will mention the third one, inshallah. So the first one is the religion. Islam came to protect and preserve. Number one and, and first and the foremost is deen, your religion. And number two is your life. So all the rules in Islam came to preserve those five things. And to, tonight, inshallah, we'll talk about the aql, the intellectual ability that Allah and the rules of Islam did not come to make our life difficult. And that's not the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent the Quran to us. It is not to, to make our life tough or follow the rules and, and do that, do not do that. You know, one of the things that I, I see that like one of the misconceptions, misunderstandings in Islam, that some people think, you know what? Islam is so tough, uh, full of uh, restrictions. Do that, do not do that. SubhanAllah, I told you before, if we made the test on the five pillars of Islam, you might find yourself only doing one. Doing one, SubhanAllah. Because you might, have, you might, you might be a, like a sick person or a, a lady, she just delivered the baby or a lady, she was in the ministerial period or uh, somebody is traveling. So he, he, he is exempt from fasting. Another one does not have money. SubhanAllah, whatever he earns, he spends. That's it, khalas. He's not required to pay zakah. And, 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 and of course, if he will not pay zakah, mostly, mostly he will not be able to afford hajj. So, so you will end up doing one, one just pillar in Islam that you will be essentially required to answer the questions about this pillar on the day of judgment. That's the case. That's the, that's the entire religion when it comes to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean the ibadah for Allah in terms of the pillars. What about the, the, the dealings with others? To, how to treat with each and everyone else? Be nice. That's, that's all. Be nice. Be kind. Be gentle. That's Islam. That Islam is so easy. But those who want it to find excuses for themselves. You know, you are Imam, we have lots of rules and, and that's so tough. And, and one of the things that, you know, the easiest way to escape from the, 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 the what, what, I, what, I, what I call it the fortress of Islam or the limits of Islam that you claim, you know what, we have many scholars, many Imams, many, Sheikhs, there are lots of fatwas, contradiction. That's the way of someone does not want to do anything at all. And he just wanted to take them as excuse. Subhanallah, Rasulullah said, Al halalu bayin, halal is clear and haram is clear. Yes, of course, we have some issues related to those who are specialists in, in the religion in terms of a knowledge, the knowledge as a science. But the basics are, are, are there in the Quran. 
No one, no one could differ and tell you, you know what? You must pray Maghrib four rakahs and Isha five rakahs. No one could tell you that you must fast beyond Ramadan. That's, that's, that's impossible. So Islam came to preserve and protect the aql. Aql here means what? The intellectual ability. So just wanted to, you know, <laughs> to quiz you a little bit. When we talk and we say aql, is that the heart or the brain? <laughs> so, huh? The heart. The brain. See, we have scholars here dis disagreed, mashallah. So, <laughs> so this is Mazhab Yusufi, okay? This is Mazhab Shinawi, you know? MashaAllah, Allah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So Brother Mutiyah said the brain, Allahu Akbar. When we say aql here means the, the brain, the brain, the, the ability to think, to comprehend, the ability to, uh, to discover, the ability to realize, the ability to imagine, the ability to, to try to figure out what do you have in your life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, and this is the first verse I take it as evidence. Surah Al-Isra, verse number 70. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 7-0, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَم We have honored the children of Adam. We have raised their status. The consensus of the scholars, they agreed upon that Allah meant here in this verse, the aql, the ability to think. Because Allah made you so special other than other creatures like animals, like even subhanAllah, I was reading the, the article uh, like two days ago in the, in the, 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 the college that, that sometimes they, they wanted to do uh, some of the experiments of, over some monkeys and to inject them with things to make them think similarly like the human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this advantage to think. You know how many times in the Quran, Allah is addressing our minds, our brains, is urging, encouraging us to think. Yatafakkarun. More than 70 times, Allah is calling us, aren't they think? Aren't they wonder? Aren't they reflect? Allah subhanahu wa the verse that we recited in Salat al-Maghrib, that's why I picked up those verses. They are, you know, uh, uh, subhanAllah relative, to the topic. Didn't they wonder and think about the camels, how I created them? And to the sky, how it is, how, how they are so high? And uh, to the earth and how it is so extended. And subhanAllah, Allah is, and, and you, you remember this verse, and I, I know Dr. Rahim, mashallah, memorizes this verse. Uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Alladheena, Walillahi mulku samawati wal ard, Wallahu ala kulli shayin qadir. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about those who are thinking and wondering about the creation of Allah and in the earth and the, the heavens. And they say, Subhanaka, once they reflect, they will come to the conclusion. Huh? Yes, they will say to Allah, Ma khalaqata hadha batila. Oh Allah, after wandering, they will come to the conclusion, Oh Allah, you did not create that to be in vain. And, and that's, that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Islam mainly, basically, urging and encouraging its followers 
to think, to wonder, to use their intellectual ability. And not only this, Islam told us not to blindly imitate somebody. Do you, Subhanallah, that's Islam. So if I am like I'm the Imam, the religious leader for the community in Newport Richie, if I told you, you know what, Brother Rashid, for example, don't ask why we will do that type of prayer, just imitate me. If I were to tell you that, tell me you are not qualified for your position. You have lots of people like this. Whenever you ask them, where is your evidence? They keep, you know, shouting, screaming at you because they have no knowledge. That's the case. They have nothing. They didn't read enough. And Islam told us, do not blindly imitate somebody. Everyone has to be asked about his evidence whenever he gives fatwa. That's why Imam Shafi'i himself said, if you found that my words are contradicting the Quran and the Sunnah, do what? Throw that away. Throw it away, subhanAllah, clearly. That's Islam. So Islam respects your mind. And, and that's number two. Number three, I wanna share with you, Islam, not only this, Islam ordered us to encourage each other to seek the knowledge. Islam without knowledge, that will not increase your level of Iman. My advice to everyone came to, came, my advice to everyone came to Islam, newly to Islam, and he asked me, Imam, what's your advice? What do you want me to do? How can I start? I tell him just one word, knowledge, get the knowledge. If you got the knowledge, it does not matter how many years you have been in, in, in Islam. Because in Islam, the concept of, you know, uh, the quantity is not here. We follow the, what, the concept of the quality. It does not matter how many years you have been in Islam. We have Muslims, astaghfirullah, unfortunately. They born as Muslims, they died as Muslims, lived 70, 80 years in Islam, and they give the worst example of being Muslims. They give the worst examples of Muslims. And subhanAllah, you might have a person who just accepted Islam two, three months ago, but subhanAllah, his efforts in learning, in getting the knowledge, in serving his community, being active Muslim, practiced Muslim, a good citizen, a good Muslim amongst the, com the community, so active to the point that he wanted to serve each and every Muslim. Basically, this is the mission of Rasulullah. Am I right? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what made him travel from Mecca to Ta'if, from Ta'if to Medina, from Mecca to somewhere? Why? For that religion, for that deen. So that's the case. So Islam also, one of the things, I wanna explain that statement, uh, but Brother Malik gave me the advice to explain it and to take my time because it's so important. Uh, it's, it's not a crucial statement, but it's the statement that I wanted to examine you or to test you a little bit. What comes first, brain or the divine text? The divine text, the text of the Quran and the Sunnah. What comes first? <laughs> so, so Quran first, yes. so the divine text first, and listen to this. Islam told us that yes, we respect the intellectual ability, but do, do not take it as a, as a rule to control or to give the decision for the divine text. So that means the brain, our brain cannot govern 
the divine text. Because we as Muslims, we believe that every sense that Allah had created to us has a limitation. But some people don't think that even brains, the minds has no limitation. Has, they think that they have brains has no limitation. But we believe even the brain, even our ability of thinking has some limitations, subhanAllah. So you cannot see while you are here, what's going on in, on, in, on Tampa. You cannot hear Imam Yahya while he is praying Maghrib in the Nidan Masjid right now. You cannot, you know, uh, uh, feel or see what's going on in your house right now because you have certain limitations. And yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the brain and the, the mentality so we can use it. And now, mashallah, the human beings discovered amazing things. But at the end of the day, they have limit. They have limit. Can you read with me? Alif Lam Mim, Thalik al Kitabu la Rayba fi, Hudan lil Muttaqin. What's the first feature? Alladina, Yuminuna, huh? Bil Rayba. Who are the Muttaqin? Who are the righteous? Those who believe in the unseen. Because if I were to tell you that we have jinn kind, logically, rationally, realistically, you will not be able to believe. And not only this, you know, one of the arguments that I told you about with Imam Abu Hanifa, the man who came and said, you know what, Imam? I do not believe in the existence of Allah. He said, why? He said, because I cannot see him. I cannot touch him. I cannot shake hand with him. I want to see something. He said, you know, by that way, by that logic, you are insane. You are crazy. You have no mind. He said, no, I have mind. He said, but I cannot see your mind. I cannot see the brain itself inside. I cannot touch that brain by myself. I cannot shake hand with your brain. You know, that's why you have no mind. You have no brain inside. And subhanAllah, that nullifies the idea of that we do not believe in anything except that we see or we touch. In Islam, no, we have indications and we have evidences, but who comes first? The aql, the brain or the divine text? Of course, the divine text. And we said that, that's, that's the golden statement of Imam Al-Imam Ali, Nabi Talib radiallahu anhu, when he said, if we are going to apply the brain and make it govern the divine text, we could find that wiping under the leather socks has to be only, only under, not above the leather socks. Because logically, the dirt will come where? On the bottom. So why we wipe over? Why we wipe on the top? because that's the divine text. We apply the divine text first. That means, yes, we have some of the knowledge that we can know the wisdom of most of the rules in Islam, but not 100%. Allah kept something to examine your Iman even if I'm going to hide some of the wisdom behind these Islamic rules, are you going to believe? Are you going to believe in the unseen? If I, if I told you that I have angels, would you believe that's the case? So what comes first? The divine text. We use our brain, our minds, our intellectual ability so we can know the wisdom. If Allah gave us the knowledge and opened the gates of his mercy and we were we would able to know that, that's ni'mah by Allah. That's why the verses that Dr. Rahim recited, Ar-Rahman, Allama al-Quran, khalaq al-insan, Allamahu al-bayan. So look at the, the concept, like the, how Allah put them in order. Ar-Rahman, he taught the Quran. He could he could he couldn't say 
that he taught him al-bayan, the, the language, the way of speaking, the way of talking, delivering speeches. SubhanAllah, he, could, he, could, he couldn't say that before teaching him the Quran because Quran comes first. The Sharia comes first. So that's why it's so important you as a Muslim to know the importance of the Aql. Islam also came to protect the Aql. You know what Rasulullah said in the Hadith, and it's authentic Hadith. He said, sometimes the Shaitan will come to you and will tell you who, who had created you. You will say, Allah. Or how did you came to this life? Say, from my dad. Then how did your dad came? From his dad. Then how that guy came from? From his, four, like, my four grandfather. Then my four, four grandfather. Then, you know, then who created, you will say Adam. Came from Adam. Then who created Adam? Allah. Then, Rasulullah said, then you will find yourself asking, then who created Allah? He said, if you reach to that limit, be sure that this is shaitan. It's whispering to you, do what? Say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Falyastaiv. Let him say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. So, because that is shaitan. Because believing in the limitation of the brain, that does not mean that we do not believe in science. No, I told you, Islam 70 times is encouraging us to, to travel the world, to discover, to invent, do everything possible, but to believe at the same time that we have certain limitations. <clears throat> That's why in Islam, we if you have someone is he's, he lost his mind, he went, you know, unconscious. You cannot ask him to do prayers. If you have a little boy, he cannot differentiate between what's halal and haram. A little kid, a little baby, he's not required. Why? He, his, his mind is not ready yet. His brain is not ready yet to function and to comprehend upon the rules in Islam. And not only this, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered us to ask, ask, seek the knowledge. Surah al nahl the first page, almost the, the fifth verse or the sixth verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if you, do, if, you, if you do want to know anything, go to the people of knowledge and ask them. That's a command. فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُوا Go and seek the knowledge. Don't imitate blindly going. That's why we are completely different than the, the, the system of the churches. You know that? In Islam, we do, not have, we do not have that title in Islam. A religious man. We do not have a religious um, priest or someone who speaks on behalf of Allah or someone that you need to confess to him so he will forgive your sins. You know, we do not have this in Islam. Actually, we are campaigning against that way. If some Muslims started to do that as shirk, they go to certain sheikh and the sheikh wipes over his head, mashallah gets shifa, Allahu Akbar. That's Isa ibn Maryam, subhanAllah. Astaghfirullah. <coughs> you know? That did not happen with Abu Bakr. That did not happen with Abu Bakr. Subhanallah. Some people practice shirk. We do not have religious man in Islam. We have a scholar, a man who has the knowledge. That's it. Even that man has no authority over anyone except delivering the message. That's it. Rasulullah himself, the best of the creation. Allah said, Ya ayyuhar Rasul, O the messenger of Allah, 
بلغ just convey ما أنزل إليك من ربك all your mission is to convey the message that's it and and you know لست عليهم بيقول سايتر you will not overtake them you will not control them oh Muhammad you, because you cannot control the guidance you are a message you are the best of the creation your mission is to deliver the message that's it whether they accept it or not leave that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's the case so in Islam we do not you know imitate someone blindly the last point that I just wanted to you know uh, you know in Islam Islam told us to protect your your aql, your brain you need to be away from the toxic things like alcohol the materials like alcohol uh, drugs all the things that will damage will will damage your brain will affect your ability to think to comprehend to function to invent to create something to do something to do your job in islam that's why islam said like drugs and alcohol is haram also gambling losing that money and 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 being like you know chasing the money and be overwhelmed and stressed out with you know all these situations by gambling by drinking alcohol and now you can see if somebody is drunk how would he behave you think you know that you see by yourselves and subhanallah when you see someone like fully drunk wallahi you look at him and you say subhanallah astaghfirullah that's why islam made it haram now i realize you know that that statement that they said <laughs> someone came and said you know what i want to steal i want to rob people the son the, the the second one said you know why don't you know what i want to kill people the third one said i want to commit zina adultery and the fourth one said you know what i want to drink alcohol so they said for those first the three the third the first three people no don't do this and just we will allow somebody to drink and when he drank he did all of those he raped people he committed zina and he killed that's why it is called that this is the only title for alcohol in islam um you know um um what's um mama you know um or mama the mother um al khabai the mother of the the vice the vices the mother of the bad ethics the mother of the core the ethic the essence of the sins the essence of the bad attributions that, that this is this is alcohol that's islam islam came against all of those for the interest the benefit of the humanity another thing you know islam also told us yes why is there one word about in quran that there are some benefits <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> yes allahu akbar this is in surah al-baqarah that was before islam be, be, sorry before the prohibition or the final decision in islam because islam give the islam, the, the rule of uh, prohibition of alcohol gradually the first step was all people will they will ask you about the wine say it has some benefits and major damages and that was the first step and some benefits here somewhat like treatment some you, people can extract not not in drinking but in the material itself yes in the material itself as a wine not not in drinking because the drinking obviously clearly it's haram that's why the second step to gradually because you know islam said people will be toxic and they will be addicted to alcohol so you cannot say 
Alaikum Sahir. You cannot say in, in, in one minute, stop and they wouldn't stop. They wouldn't stop. They wouldn't obey. That's why the stage number two, do not come to the salah while you are drunk. You know, wantum sukara. The third stage, which is the final one, do not drink. Stop drinking. That's how Islam gradually prohibited alcohol. But one of the issues I wanted to conclude with, to protect your brain, you need what? You know what? You need to stay away from toxic people. Do, do we have toxic people? Yes. <laughs> you know what, what I call them, I was talking with my daughter today about this topic. Energy vampires. Energy vampires. Yes. Sometimes you might get a call from somebody, just 10 minutes. 10 minutes, subhanAllah. And he sucks your energy. Sometimes your iman. Sometimes your relationship with Allah. 10 minutes phone call. Toxic. He's toxic to the point that he makes you unhappy sometimes. Stressed out. And gives you negative energy. And he takes away your positive energy and throw it away. And those people will not have, you know, two ways of conversation. No, he just wants you to keep listening to his, you know, maladies, to his opinions, to his ideas. And that's it. He is toxic. Islam told us to stay. You know what? That's from Quran. Stay away from the ignorant. Stay away from the ignorant. And why is that? They are toxic. They will take your energy out. That's the case. So Islam told us to protect our aql, our brain. Even the toxic people stay away from them. That's, that's in Islam. So what they are teaching now in colleges, in you know, psychology, science, that's taken from Quran 14 centuries ago. Islam told us about the toxic people, the energy vampires who is attacking you and trying to take your energy out. May Allah protect our aql. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve the aql so we can use it to wonder and think about the creation of Allah, reflect upon the, the commands of Allah, the orders and the, the relationship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairan, barakallahu feekum. And you know, the Thursday lecture is so deep. Lots of things I know, it takes lots of time, but alhamdulillah, I have my excuse. We stopped for almost one week. And now I have to take all my right back and to do, you know, all the portion, inshallah, lect lectures. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. Allah, I mean, inshallah, don't forget. Huh? No, 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 that's not toxic, Allah. <laughs> that's not toxic. You see, we need to go back to life and have some issues of life, such as the in retrospect, all of these is part of life. Yes. And this part of society, but we don't have a good look at what is the concept of. Like. We have surrogate mothers. That's a life. Yeah. In retro fertilization, people who are so, you're giving life, but not in natural way. And. Um, these are all the issues. <laughs> no, in, yeah, I... Like, they are renting wombs or... Different, put them in tubes. And fathers and put it to somebody else. Yes. You can either do or you can use the just father, father's sperm 
and have another woman to do the rest. Yeah. Um, so you can, if any number of combinations yeah. can be done, these are issues. We have, we have answers for each and every issue in Islam. So inshallah, maybe, maybe one day, inshallah next time. Yeah. But, but yeah. alhamdulillah, listen, for each and, and every case, alhamdulillah, we studied that long time ago. So like to take the, 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 the wife's part, the, the, the female part and the sperm and put them in a tube, yeah. okay? Then transfer it to a womb of a third or, or a, a third party, you know, that has a rule. And to take that sperm and the, 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 the female part and put it to the, the female womb, that has an issue. And sometimes, sometimes they, they just rent the womb for that operation, for that process. They take the, the child. Alhamdulillah, in Islam, we have an answer for each and everyone. Inshallah, in details the next time to give you time for Salat Sunnah, inshallah, Dr. Yusuf. <laughs> no, no, no. We, 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 we need you to keep your question for tomorrow. <laughs> Jazakallah <laughs> khairan. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. No questions.